Hey everyone, we code. Let's make a Discord bot using Discord.js. Being a JavaScript project, we're gonna want to have Node.js installed. All you have to do is download, run the installation, and then you should be good from there. Assuming you have it installed, just go to discordapp.com, hover over the developers dropdown, go to developer portal, and then create a new application, which you would do by clicking on new application. Name it whatever you want. I'm going to just name it we code. Next, you'd wanna go over to this bot menu, click on add bot. Yes, do it and name it whatever you want. Just a quick note, adding bot to the name would be redundant since Discord already denotes all bots as a bot. Once you have that set up, you can start creating your project. So I'll be creating a folder and naming it WeCodeBot. Grab that project directory and open up your command line, cd to the project directory, and then run npm init. This just creates some files so note how things will work, but package name, I'll leave it as WeCodeBot. Version, leave that. Description, whatever you want, Discord bot. Entry point index.js, which I'll be creating soon. Test command, leave that. Get repository, you can ignore that. Keywords, ignore. Author, read code, or your own name. Pick whatever license you want, I'll just leave it as default. And yes. Now let's just open up this project inside of Visual Studio Code or whatever IDE you use. Doesn't matter, I just prefer Visual Studio Code. And let's create the index.js file. But before we start writing code, we're going to want to install Discord.js and then a couple other packages being Minimist. This is just something so I can quickly make the bot work like a CLI. And then I'll be using .env so I can quickly use some environment variables. So just open up the command line again and install all those packages. npm install Discord.js, sorry, then install Discord.js, Minimist, and .env dash 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 save. Save just saves it to your dependencies inside of your package.json. Now the packages are ready to use, so we can start typing in code. If we go back here and scroll down, we'll see a code snippet that we can use for a quick start. I'll grab that and paste it in. Here's where you would put your token. To get your token, you would just go back to your Discord app, go back to your bot, and click on Reveal Token, and copy that. Or you can just click on this Copy button, which you could just paste right here. What I prefer doing is to put it inside of an environment variable. So let's create a file called .env. Say secret equals your key. Now we're going to want to reference our .env package. That code's all you need. And just paste that directly at the top so it's the first thing that's loaded. Now we can just say process.env.secret. All that will do is just insert secret this part right here. Now if we just run the project using node index.js, we'll see that the bot has loaded, logged in as we code. Now let's invite this bot to a server. We'll be wanting to go to this link, I'll put this in the description, and right here you would replace that with your actual client ID. You can get your client ID by going back to your application, general information, and copy your client ID. Put that there, and then add this bot to a server that you're an admin in. I created a server called test server, authorize. I'm not a robot. And if we go back to our test server, we'll see that the bot has joined. If the Discord client sees that a message was received on any Discord server, it will check if the content was ping, and then it will reply pong. So I'll type in ping, and the bot responds with pong. For debugging purposes, we can just say console.log message.content. We run the project, and anytime we send a message, it will log that message to the console. Hello world, subscribe to WeCode. If you could do that, that would be great, or at least like the video. So now let's actually make this bot useful. Maybe have it accept some commands like almost every other bot. Let's require this package in our code. The way that I plan on having this bot work is to have it work as if every single message were a command. With Minimist, we can get that done easily to accept parameters and such. So if the Discord client were to get the message meet person dash dash seconds 200, we can use parse args to actually grab this argument seconds of 200, then we'd probably program the code to meet the person for 200 seconds. 
Like we saw in the console, messages sent from the Discord server are read from message.content. The way that minimist works is that it has to read everything in arrays. So what we would be doing is var message array equals message.content dot split space. So now for every space in a string, everything will be split into an array. Just to show you what that looks like. Send, and then you see hello big boy. And for every space, it was split into another index. Then let's have minimus parse this. I'll just create a variable var command equals parse args message r. And let's show you how that looks. We'll see that it's now inside of an object and for every string, it's actually that. But if we were to add parameters like Because say hi is not a parameter value, we see that it's stored under the underscore key inside of an array. But then delay is a parameter, so delay is equal to 500. Any other string that's not inside of a parameter will be stored inside of this underscore array. Any string that's not, any string that's not a parameter will be stored inside of this underscore array. And just for an example, say hi my guy. We see all non-parameter strings are in this array. But to actually parse the command, the only parts that I really care for are the strings, not the parameters. So I'm going to set this equal to dot underscore, which will just be this array right here. And I'm going to store the options inside of another variable, which would just be this entire object, but I'm going to delete the underscore part. Command should now just be the array that we saw and op should just be all following parameters. We'll restart the project, send some text, say hi delay 500, and then we'll see. The command being an array, say hi, and then options being delay 500. Let's actually make something out of this command. What I wanted to do is, if the command is say hi, then we'll have the bot respond with hi. But if there's an option of delay, then we're going to have the bot read that delay and set the delay appropriately. I'm going to do this as follows. Creating a switch on command 0, which will just be the first string inside of our command array. And if the command is say hi, we will respond with message.reply. Hello. I don't want to have to restart the project every single time, so I'm going to install nodemon, but globally. Now we can just do nodemon index.js. What nodemon does is automatically watches for changes, and if there's any change, the app will rerun. I just find it annoying to have to restart every single time. Let's go back to the server and say hi. Hello. But we didn't program any delay. Let's actually try that. I'm gonna wrap everything inside of a scope. Now I'm going to define an error function, which would just be message.reply hello. Now let's have the program check if there's the delay parameter, and we can do that with if delay in ops, then we'd run the delay. So set timeout, say hi, with ops.delay. So after whatever milliseconds, it should run the say hi function. If there is no delay option, then we'll just have it immediately say hi. Again, nodemon has it automatically restart, so we can just skip straight here. Say hi delay 3000, because it's in milliseconds. 3000 milliseconds is three seconds, so after three seconds, the boss should reply with hi. One, two, three. That was way too fast. <laughs> there you go. Hello. And if we just say hi, there's no delay. Hello. Hopefully now you know how to make a CLI like bot, but let's actually make some useful commands because who even cares about say hi? That's kind of useless in my opinion. If we go back to the package and click on this image, 
it should take us to the actual Discord JS documentation. Well, right here. Notice how client is new discord.client. It's actually just calling on the Discord JS package and then grabbing the client class. If you go back to the documentation, we'll look for the class client, which is right here. And then uh, for events, we are using the dot on message event, which would be this. As we saw, this function is called whenever a message is created, the type being message. And this would be all the properties and methods that we can use on this message. See how we got message.content, which is actually the message string, message.content type string, the content of the message. Let's try out one of these methods. So maybe I want to have message.delete. As said here, delete just deletes the message. So I'll create a new command, case delete me. Message.delete. Go back to here, send that delete me. But there's a problem, the message doesn't delete. Why? It's because there's an error in the console, which tells you exactly what the issue is. Discord API error, missing permissions. It just means that the bot can't delete the message. To get around this, we can just create a role for it. Say bot, and I'll make it an admin. Now if we go to members and give the bot that role, it should now be able to delete it. So, delete me. Notice how it just got deleted like right away. Delete me. Hello! Deleted. Again, it didn't work earlier because the bot didn't have permissions. So if you're going to use any method, make sure that your bot is actually able to do that. Like if you want your bot to be able to change someone's roles to, I don't know, mute them, you're going to want to make sure that your bot actually has the permission to change someone's roles. Let's try making a mute command, starting off with the actual command handler. So case mute. What we're going to need to do is actually grab that member class and then add role. Going back to the documentation and looking at the message class, we'll see a property of member. This is the creator of that message, which is type guild member, taking us to that class. We should see a method, which is add role. As we see here, we're going to have to actually specify a role that we want to give. Now we're going to actually need to create a role, which would restrict someone from being able to type. So create a new role. Name it muted, probably yellow, which I find is pretty standard with muted roles. And inside of the text channel, we want to restrict anyone in that role from being able to send messages. So edit channel, permissions, roles muted, and set send messages to nothing. So anyone who has the role shouldn't be able to send the message. But with me being the owner of the server, I pretty much bypass that restriction, but anyone else they should be muted and we shouldn't be able to send messages. Let's actually program the mute command. So again, message.member.addRole. And then the first parameter being the role ID snowflake. To get the ID, we need to go back to the role and make sure that it's mentionable. Then type in backslash at muted. Then we get this ID. Once you get the ID, you may want to disable the mentionable permissions so they don't get spammed with notifications. No one likes that. And now we would just enter that as the first parameter. So not any, so not any time someone says mute, they should get the mute role. I already have the role, so let me just remove that. And let's type in mute. And I should have the role again. Yep. Maybe just to make this seem more responsive, we'll say message dot reply added mute role. And again, mute. It tells us that the mute role was added, but we probably don't want to have to mute ourselves every single time. A more realistic scenario would probably be muting someone else, like mute at spammer123, whatever their username is, and then we'd want the mute role to be added to them so they can't spam anymore. To get the mentions inside of a message, we would be looking at the message class and documentation, properties, mentions, go to that class. Then we'd be grabbing the members property, which would be a collection of that. And then we'll grab the first mention. So to code that, let's create a variable target, target being the person we'll want to mute, equals message dot mentions dot members dot first. This just grabs the first mention in that message. 
Now that we have this guild member, we can just use that and add the role to them. Looking at the guild member class, we see a property called display name. I want to add that right here. So added mute role to plus target dot display name. As it says here, display name is the nickname of this member. I don't have anyone else in the server, so I'm just going to run this command on myself. So mute at ff. Sorry, I just saw there's an error. Members isn't actually a function, it's a property. Just remove that. Now I can try muting myself again. Or muting whoever's mentioned. And it says added mute role to ff. And as we see here, I have the mute role. Again, I only mentioned myself because there's no one else in this server but me and the bot. But if there was someone else in the server and you muted them, the role should be added perfectly fine. There's lots of other methods that you can use on the actual guild member. As you can see here, create DM. You just create a DM and then you would send a message to them with send. Or if you create a ban command, you could just say target dot ban parentheses. There's tons of other methods and properties that you can take advantage of. I mean, like if we look at the client class again and look at the guild member add event, we can we can just target that with client.add guild member add and then maybe send them a greeting message via DM. This documentation is awesome. Seriously, look through it. You can make so much. It supports the entirety of the Discord API. I don't know what else to tell you. Just take advantage of it. Hopefully I gave you enough information to build on top of. If you want to just look at the project, I'll leave a GitHub link in the description. If this video helped you out, please leave a like. I'd really appreciate that. Even more if you subscribed and have a good one.